Hey everyone, and welcome back to Passion for Life Gallery. A famous American songwriter once said, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Is the answer to Ecuador's energy needs also blowing in the wind? In this video, we're going to take a tour of the Vianaco wind farm. We're going to learn a little bit about the history of this place, and we're going to learn a little bit about how windmills in general work. And we'll also talk a little bit as well about the environmental impact and concerns about these projects. So join us as we take a tour of this facility and we will see just exactly what is blowing in the wind here in Ecuador. The Vianaco wind farm consists of 11 wind turbines manufactured and installed by the Gold Wind Company from China. Each has a capacity of 1.5 megawatts for a total of 16.5 megawatts. The project covers a distance of about 2 kilometers on the Vianaco Ridge between the city of Loja to the east and the Catamayo Valley to the west. There's a very good reason why the windmills are up here. As you can probably see behind me and as you may have seen in some of the other footage, the wind blows up here, I think, continuously. We were up here last night and it was very, very cold. So anyways, it's a beautiful day. It's about eight o'clock in the morning and uh, the sun is shining brightly, but the wind is absolutely horrendous up here, as you can see. In fact, this ridge was known for its high winds by the indigenous people of this area. Planning for this project took place over about 10 years starting in the early 2000s. Construction began in 2011 with commercial production of electricity starting in July 2013. Thus July of this year was the 8th anniversary for commercial operation. In that time period, this facility has contributed more than 600 gigawatt hours to the national grid, or about 75,000 megawatts per year on average. With the average North American home using about 10,000 kilowatt hours per year, that's enough for about 7,500 homes. Of course, that represents many more Ecuadorian households which consume a lot less energy. And while it seems like a lot, this wind farm represents only about 0.2% of the national energy production. So I just want to mention 
that there is a visitor center here with an interpretation center and a cafeteria. However, I cannot show that to you today. I can't even get in to take photos of it because it's closed due to the pandemic. So that, my friends, will have to wait for another occasion. Anyway, let's continue with the video. As to the individual turbines themselves, the three blades on each turbine are about 35 meters long each, giving the turbine a rotor diameter of 70 meters. The rotor hub is mounted to a nacelle atop the tower, which has a height of about 65 meters. The diameter of the towers is quite large, I'm guessing more than 3 meters, as can be seen in this photo, assuming the top of the stairs are about 2 meters high. The following animation will help demonstrate the basic aerodynamics of wind turbines of this type. The red arrows indicate the wind moving toward the blades. As the wind moves across the blades, the wing-like design causes a change in air pressure between what we see in this image as the top side and the opposite side, in this case, the bottom. The result is higher pressure on the top, lower on the bottom. This difference in air pressure creates what is called lift. That is, a force exerted on the top side causing the blades to move in a clockwise direction as viewed from the front. Of course, with wind turbine blades, unlike airplane wings, there is no top side or downside, and the force is not really lifting the blade, but rather causing it to rotate. The nacelle, the part to which the hub and the blades are attached, can be turned by means of computer-controlled motors so that the blades are always facing the wind. This is called changing the yaw. The angle of the blades, or pitch as it is called, can also be controlled so that they are using the wind in the most efficient way. The turbines generate electricity by rotating a direct current generator. These particular turbines are connected directly to the generator, whereas others are connected by means of a gearbox. The high amperage DC current produced by the generator is then converted into high voltage AC current which can be sent to the transfer station. In the case of the Vianaco wind farm, this station is located just down the hill towards the city of Loja. From there, the electricity is transferred to the National Interconnected System for use throughout Ecuador. The efficient design of these turbines allows them to start producing electricity with a wind blowing at as little as 2.5 meters per second or about 5.5 miles per hour. They do, however, max out at 25 meters per second or about 55 miles per hour wind speed. This prevents damage to the rotors or other parts of the infrastructure. For this reason, in addition to controlling the pitch, the turbines are equipped with a braking system. As to efficiency, this wind farm is one of the most efficient in the world in terms of its capacity factor. That is to say the amount of electricity a turbine produces compared to its maximum design potential. One of the main reasons for this high capacity factor is the consistent winds to be found on this ridge.
This wind farm has become an attraction for academics and tourists alike since its installation. Not only is it the only wind farm in continental Ecuador, but it is one of the highest in the world at just over 2,700 meters. I will also add that from a tourism standpoint, the views from this ridge of the city and the Catamayo Valley are really spectacular. We even had the opportunity to enjoy a fantastic sunset from this location. I hope you have enjoyed this video up to this point. I just want to talk now a little bit about some of the environmental concerns that people have surrounding windmill projects like this one. So there really are three concerns that people have surrounding projects like this. Number one, some say they're a blight on the landscape. Number two, people say that they're noisy. And number three, that they kill birds. Anyway, as the video continues now, we will address each one of those concerns in turn. The first, that they are a blight, is of course a matter of opinion. Some see the beauty in the fact that they are helping to remove unwanted carbon from the atmosphere, and that is what they see when they look at them. Every year, for example, in the case of the Vianaco wind farm, they represent a decrease in CO2 emissions of roughly 35 million metric tons. To the second point, yes, they do create noise, specifically three types that I have observed and recorded myself. If you listen to the following enhanced recording, you will hear three or four distinct sounds, besides, of course, the wind moving across the microphone and any traffic noise. This first recording is the sound of the blades moving through the air, which at times sound like a whistle. The second recording is that of the rotation noise from all of the moving parts, no doubt, focused around the hub itself. The third recording is what I assume is the brake. know that these sounds in these recordings were recorded at ground level less than 100 meters from the base of the towers and the volume of the recording has been increased by about 20 decibels. So yes they do create noise but it is not very loud when put into perspective. And to the third point on the death of birds According to the website cleanpower.org, wind power causes less than 0.01% of all human-related bird deaths, far fewer than buildings or cars, for example. Whether this is true here at Vianaco, I cannot say for certain. Environmental studies carried out before construction began determined that this area had a sparse population of birds and that none of the species found in this area were endangered 
in any way. I cannot say if that still holds true today. You can access this site from both valleys, that is to say from Loha or from Katamayo. Although I will say at this time there is considerable damage in some parts to all of the accesses as you will be able to see in some of these segments. So if you're driving you will want to be careful for sure. The round trip tour from Loha to the summit down the other side and back should only take a couple of hours, depending of course on how much time you spend at the summit or along the way. Well everyone, I really hope that you have enjoyed this short presentation on the Vianaco Wind Project. I hope that you've learned something about windmills that you didn't know before and a little bit about the history of this place as well. We'd like to bring you more content like this, so if you'd like to support us here on the channel, you just have to hit that like button and maybe share this video with someone as well. And if you have not yet done so, why not subscribe so that you can see more content similar to this. So thank you very much for watching. Talk to you next time on Passion for Life, Gowrie.